to be able to show the five goals from Southend against Reading later, but let's get straight back to the main item on this afternoon's agenda, Bristol City against Swindon at Ashton Gate. Two men who know all about the current form of both City and Swindon are the sports writers who report all their matches home and away. Angus caught up with them earlier, Phil Duffel who covers Swindon and Richard Payne on City. What has been their reaction to, to you know to the the news this week and, mm. and the change in management? Mm. Initially, shock, one of shock. I spoke to a lot of them as soon as the news came out, and they couldn't quite believe it. Um, I think that they got it obviously all from the, from the media first, which I think came as a bit of a disappointment to them. Um, so they're all a little bit up in the air. They need a bit of reassuring, I think, players. They they, they need to uh, to know where they stand, and of course this week's been very difficult for them. But. Now that Joe's in place, I think the appointment, a quick appointment was important. They know who's a gaffer and they know, what to, they know what's expected of them. So now they must settle down, be professional about this, and, and get on with the job in hand today. Who, who do you feel are going to be the key players on Sunday to be able to lift the side? Yeah, key players um, from the front, certainly Wayne Allison, as I've mentioned, uh, big bustling striker, just in Joe's sort of mould, really. He was a very committed player, as we know from the United Scotland throughout his career. And I think he'll see a lot, he'll put a lot on Wayne because he's this sort of player and bustle as well. Um, Rob Edwards, I think, in my opinion, has been the most consistent player uh, this, this season, out, outfield player. And I think he'll have a, a big part to play. He's come on a lot in the last season or so. Still very young, but in central midfield, he's got a lot to deal with. Obviously, a new manager coming in, even though he'll know people like Junior and, and a few of them, Ian Baird, he'll want to make his own changes, want to stamp his own authority on, on the side. And Junior has had good and bad games this season, as, as every City player at the moment. He's really struggled quite badly. But, uh, yeah, he's going to have to show a lot today. His pace is going to be very important if he can get behind the defence and put the accurate, consistent crosses in for the likes of Wayne Allison. Baird gets the flick on. Bent. Can he get round? Puts pace on it. I have to ask you, Richard, what's your prediction for this afternoon's game? If you'd asked me that before Russell had gone, I would have said City would do well to have drawn. Um, but now I think they just may sneak it, may get it on points. They started the season well, and for a while they were right up there with the promotion challenges. Um, but a few defeats recently uh, have dropped them back into the pack and uh, obviously they've got to be concerned about what's going on at the bottom of the league as well as the top at this stage. I mean, it's very tight, isn't it? I mean, is there a waveform that's really let them down? It has. I think they've got three points out of a possible 21 so far this season and with anything better than that, as I say, they would still be up there with the challengers. If they can put that right, then I'm sure they'll go shooting back up the league. Now, you've seen them all season. What's the problem? Uh, the problem at the moment is certainly the same as it was last year in the Premiership, which is conceding too many goals. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you point the finger at the goalkeeper, at the defence or whatever. It's a team game and they've got to sort it out as a team, start defending as a unit. Nelson. And then Nelson made the run. And Nelson, has he got the better? And Thompson, he has, goes round all the way and scores. Their strong points are undoubtedly the form of Jan Fjortoft and the partnership he's beginning to form with Keith Scott, though, isn't it? I would think Jan, is, is on, on his day, is one of the best strikers in this country. I certainly don't think possibly Mark Hughes apart. There's probably not a better volleyer of the ball in this country. Uh, and he just does things out of the ordinary, and certainly in the first division, that makes him a real match winner. And here goes Fjortoft. Scott in the middle. Scott! Scotty came to the club as the typical English centre forward, you know, brash, bustling, perhaps not too skillful. Uh, since then, Swinnon have worked hard on him, he's worked hard on his game, and he's improved sort of leaps and bounds this year. I think he's got eight goals so far. So, your prediction for Sunday? I think it'll be close. Um, I, I think Swindon could win it. Um, Bristol City have been struggling a little bit. How big an influence that the new manager will have on them remains to be seen. Um, but Swindon do just need perhaps one win uh, to really set them going again this season, and, and Bristol City could be the ideal opportunity. 
Well, one of them's going to be right, isn't he? Well, Mark, Mark Shale, City's form this season has been disappointing, hasn't it? What's gone wrong? I don't know. We started quite well to the, se to, to the season, but we've been very inconsistent recently, and it's been a bit of a worry for us. Uh, obviously, when you're losing games, confidence is very low, but uh, hopefully a victory today can be a turning point for us. Mm. Swindon, again, they started well, but they've, they've faltered, haven't they, Sean? That's right. Our home form all, all season, bar our last game at Millwall, we've won our, our games, and that's important for us. Our wife's games have been, have been very bad, and <laughs> like I say, it'd be nice to start off with a win, a win at Bristol City today. Joe Jordan earlier mentioned injuries. I mean, how much do th does that affect you in a, in a long campaign like this? Well, very much so. We're, obviously, we haven't had a settled side for that reason, and uh, that's always a problem. But uh, obviously, key players out uh, is a worry for us, but uh, hopefully players will take their chance today. Well, the team's just about to take the field at Ashton Gate. It's been raining all day, Sean. How much will the, will the wet conditions affect the game today? I mean, it'll be a very interesting game. I mean, I think you'll look at both sets of forwards and see they're both probably on form. Our, our forwards are always scoring goals. I mean, so I think I'm going to go for a, a away win. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't predict, expect you to say anything else. But Mark, we, we saw the, cr the crowds coming in. Obviously, there's a bit of a buzz about Joe Jordan's arrival. I mean, how do the players see it? Well, uh, it's, it's been, a, been an exciting place to be this week, and uh, Joe's come to the club and he's made it very clear the way he wants us to play the game, and uh, he's talked to us individually and collectively as a side, and uh, we all know where we stand, and I think that's important. Swindon, of course, Sean, will, will be aware of the effect that a new manager can have, won't they? That's what I think Martin brought it up before. I mean, they're going to be G'd up, new manager, whatever. But like I say, I'm hoping that this will be a stepping stone for our next two home games after this and go on to better things. Well, both the, both the, cap, both the managers have been confident. They've had the two reporters. One of them is going to write a, a glowing report. What are your predictions, Mark? What do you think? I think we'll win the game 2-1. 2-1? Yeah. And for you, Sean? Like I say, it'll be a way win. Don't matter what it is, it'll be a way win. <laughs> Well, entirely mixed in the studio here. Mark and Sean, of course, will be with us for the rest of the afternoon. But now let's go live to Ashton Gate and join our commentary team, Mark Lawrenson and Angus Scott. Four years on, Joe Jordan is once again expected to weave some Scottish magic over Ashton Gate. The spell that's cursed it so far leaves Bristol City fighting a relegation battle. But the arrival of Jordan for a second spell in Bristol already seems to have had the desired effect on the fans. More than three times the normal amount turned up to see Jordan at Tuesday night's reserve match against Queen's Park Rangers, and he's getting a very warm reception here this afternoon. Today, an attendance of a little under 10,000 is expected well up on the usual gates, which have fallen significantly in recent years. About Jordan's return, though, although you wouldn't gather that this afternoon, the treatment of Russell Osman and just how bad things are at Ashton Gate. Well, the next 90 minutes or so will answer a few of those questions and show just how quickly Jordan can influence his new side. He's brought in a new name to the squad, that of Veergaard Hansen. Other changes have had to be made with both Shale and Baird suspended. So there's a place for Scott Partridge alongside Wayne Allison. Phil Kite makes his debut in place of the injured Keith Welsh. So we expect them to line up in 4-4-2 formation, something Jordan has always been keen on, with Junior Bent under instructions to scamper down the right wing. That's 25-year-old Veergaard Hansen, who signed on a short-term contract on Friday. The Norwegian has the difficult task of marking Jan Fjortoft. John Gorman has also been forced to make changes because of suspension and injury. Ling, Taylor, Nyholt and Thompson all missing. So a few surprise names included. Ross McLaren back for his first league game in a year. Carl Tyler makes his first appearance. He's with Swindon for a month on loan. Swindon are also expected to line up in a 4-4-2 formation. Although expect Andy Much to play just behind the front two, Ross McLaren in front of the back four. Here's our first look at Carl Tyler, the former England under-21 international, who's in to cover for Thompson and Taylor. And now my first opportunity to bring Mark in this afternoon. Mark, uh, what do you expect this afternoon? I expect that Bristol City, the players, will be uh, raised by the, ma the fact of the new manager, Angus. Joe Jordan, like any new manager's coming, he said all the right things. He's already had a bit of a go at the directors saying, if we need the money, it's up to me to have a chide at the directors and try and get some. It's obvious they need some results, starting with three points today. 
Swindon for their, for their part really away from home the form has been very very poor we know they can play they've all got good footballers they have to change their attitude away from home but for both teams I think they've made at least four changes from really what would be their strongest sides but I think we're in for an interesting day today and the pitch is great to play because it's zippy the ball's going to zip about the tackles are going to fly and it's a local derby and we're looking forward to it we certainly are and we're just waiting for the referee Mr Philip Wright who will get the game under the way and indeed the local derby is off on time and neither of these two sides have won since October the 8th in the league there's Phil Kite getting his first touch, making his debut here this afternoon for Bristol City. Believe it or not, Kite with his 14th club in a very long career. Last year, of course, with Cardiff. Not good news for Bristol City fans, though. He only kept one clean sheet while he was uh, playing last year. See what happens here this afternoon. There's a foul on Scott Partridge by Brian Kilkline. Brantinian, who is uh, back in favour with the new manager, having been dropped by the former boss, will take this free kick. Takes a deflection as much. Bodin away. And that's Beecham. He won't get there. Martin Scott with the throw. Edwards. And that's just touch too far well it's interesting to see that the last time these two sides met in the league was uh, only two years ago but of the 22 players that took the field then just four of them are the same here today Kevin Warlock the only man left of that Swindon side that uh, played in the two-all draw here at Ashton Gate and three players for City Bryant, Scott and Edwards. Here's Brian Tinian. Covering tackle from Mark Robinson. Partridge getting no change out of Kilcline. Ross McLaren in there. Edwards header forward. Tinian again. Three waiting in the middle. Robinson seems to have done well and wins the goal kick. Interesting straight away, I guess, is the fact that both teams play 4 4 2, aren't they? Very, very rigid formations. Not a lot of space in midfield. You can almost throw your coat over them at the moment. I think the important thing from both sides, if you're going to play those systems, that the, the two fullbacks from either side really have to get lots of the ball. They've got to go forward. They're always the free men in these systems, and really they've got to make the position count. Scott to Horlock again too far and ball by Scott Partridge well, Joe Jordan watched his reserves on Tuesday night here against Queen's Park Rangers saw Jason Fowler playing and decided to put him straight into the side one of a number of changes Fowler that's Robinson forward and played all year for Swindon Beecham can't keep it in play Hanson Forward to Allison. Strong challenge from Kill Klein. Here goes Junior back. First chance to run at Bodin. Support from Harriet now. Fowler. Bent. Two men on him very quickly. Harriet's cross in towards Allison. He lets it go. Return ball comes in. And Bodin can clear it away. Bryant gets there before Fjortel. Harriet again for Bristol City. Tyler. Tall figure of Carl Tyler. And the not so tall figure of Scott Partridge. Andy Much. Who's 
He's uh, playing for the fourth or fifth time in midfield now. He'll play just behind the front two of Scott and Fjortoft. Shoving the back on Keith Scott by Matt Bryant. I think it's important to hang it so certainly the way that Swindon played it. That much of though he's lined up alongside McLaren at the moment and also alongside Hullock. He's a guy who's going to do all the forward running, look to get in from midfield and get in there very, very late. Always very difficult for opposing defences to pick up the midfield runners. Well, Klein's gone up. It's floated towards Kill Klein. Allison gets the head in. Fowler's oh, header away. Keith Scott. Decides to use Tyler. Robinson. Well, Klein had stayed forward. Edwards. Fowler. Scott. Tinian. Borlock. Cut out by Scott. A long chase for Partridge. Fraser Digby, who passed a late fitness test to play this afternoon. Has a troubled knee. I think every time the ball gets played back to Digby, he has visions of Millwall, doesn't he? He does, and if you don't recall, on that occasion, a young Irishman got in there and scored in that home defeat for Swindon. That's when they lost their unbeaten home record this season. Well, they're on a run of three successive league defeats. Swindon they lost to Millwall 2-1, Bolton 3-0. Middlesbrough, 3-1. Free kick to the visitors. And Allison, none too pleased. And runs back to defend. Tyler. Odin. One of those familiar runs for Bodin. Fjortoft. Bodin carried on his run. There is Fjortoft. It's off the knee of Bryant. Tinian. It's too far for Partridge. And the flag is up from offside. It yeah, was well, just too far for Partridge. But that's typical of Tinian, although I don't think he's played particularly well this season, but he's got great vision. Good early touch, he, he saw exactly what Partridge was going to do, which was stand the last shoulder of the defender, look for the through ball. Unfortunately for Bristol City, Digby was alert to it and came and cleared the danger. Well, scoring goals has been Bristol City's problem this year, just 12 so far in the league. Here's Tinian. And it's easy for Digby. Just 12 in the league, and in fact there's only one club in the... All three divisions of the Ensley League, and in fact include the Premiership in this, that have scored fewer goals, and that's Hartlepool. And Hartlepool are bottom of the third, divi uh, third division. That speaks volumes of why Bristol City are just one place off the bottom of the first division. Fjortoft. Watched very closely by his fellow Norwegian, Birgard Hansen. He says he's played against him before, and uh, he said he had him in his pocket all that game. I'm not sure I believe him, but... Uh, They'll be able to have their own private conversation, the two Norwegian boys, won't they? Even the referee won't understand them. I'm told already that uh, Mr Hansen doesn't understand Mr Jordan, but uh, when you get a Scott-Norwegian together, I'm not surprised. Martin Scott. Tinian. Klein does well, Robinson, McLaren. Difficult for Ross McLaren this afternoon. He hasn't played since November the 6th last year against Wimbledon in a 3 0 defeat. And he hasn't played a first team game since then. I think his difficulty angles will come in the last 20 minutes, certainly on the, today's pitch, which is 
be quite heavy, although it is quite zippy, but there's a lot of surface water. And if you haven't played for so long, certainly the first team, it's the later stages where it casts you. Montinian wins the first corner for Bristol City. He already seems to have more menace about him, Brian Tinian, than he's shown for most of the season put together. Deflection off Kilkline. Taken by Fowler. And it's easy for McLaren. He almost in a crash with Tyler. It's hoofed forward by Bodin. Right under no pressure. Bryant had stayed forward. Controls it well. Inside to Rob Edwards. And just skates off the surface. Dry day that may have stayed in play. The rain has now relented. And as Mark said, it's still a very damp surface. So a little over ten minutes gone. We're still waiting for our first chance on goal. Stalemate at the moment. Martin Scott, who wears the captain's armband today in the absence of Mark Shale. Scott and in fact Scott is penalised for fouling Bryant Allison. Partridge moving into the penalty area bent as well away by Kilkline but not where he intended it unfortunately back to Robinson strong challenge from Edwards Partridge top of the crossbar Closer, Scott Partridge. First chance of the game. It came about from Edwards' tackle as well. Great tackle of Partridge. One little touch and a quick look. Unfortunately for Bristol City, just clipped the top of the crossbar. But the nice thing about that, Angus, it will warm the crowd up. It will certainly warm Bristol City up. Just clipped the top, didn't it? Good vision by the youngster. He has uh, good ball control and has the faith of the new manager. certainly given his chance towards the end of last season by Russell Osman and took it well Beecham Fowler's tackle Henson Beecham Fjortoft, Scott, overlap from Beecham, Fjortoft waiting in the middle, cut out by the new boy, Leergaard Hansen. That's the first real time we've seen Beecham in the game. Nice ball eventually played through by Scott into his path. He gets his head up as well, but good defensive cover in there by Leergaard Hansen. Corner to be taken by Bodin deep towards Tyler and Tyler was jumping on top of Matt Bryant which uh, certainly didn't go unnoticed by Mr Wright I think the way the teams are set up predominantly playing 4-4-2 they've both got one wide player in there on the right for Swindon is Boatcher and on the right for Bristol City is Junior Benton but apart from Boatcher's little run there um, Junior Benton himself have had very very little of the ball so far they've both been quite heavily marked Bent, of course, a man that Joe Jordan brought to Ashton Gate. Tinian.
Partridge. Edwards. All ball cleared by McLaren. Brian set up. Good touch by Scott. Tinian looking for the runner. Leg was up for offside. That's Junior Bent. Is, uh, one of Joe Jordan's signings from Huddersfield. And Jordan was here during his first spell. I'm sure he's under instructions to get the ball down the right hand side and run at Bowden. And I think Swinon are alert to that. We've got Kevin Hall that's going to sit in front of Bowden every time Junior gets a ball. It's going to be very, very difficult for him today. He's going to have to beat two men every time he gets possession. Well, ahead of that, surprisingly for the little man. Leon says the referee no handball against Scott Partridge. Martin Scott, long towards Allison. Partridge was looking for the nod down again. Much. Puts it away. Bodin. Horlock. Bodin again. Short to Fjortoft. And try and turn. Watched very closely by Hansen, who did well. Robinson. Beecham. Scott and Fjortoft waiting in the middle. If he can get it to them, it's a corner. Just feel Swindon beginning to settle down a bit more now. Another corner. Beach him again to take it. Out comes Kite. Only half cleared. And it'll be another corner. Difficult time for Phil Kite being thrown into the Derby atmosphere to make his debut. Here's Beecham again. It's not handy much. Corner actually by Beecham. The thing about Swindon, they've got some big boys in there, and it's a near post corner, and much got too much contact. It's almost come off the back of the head. It wasn't too dangerous for Bristol City. Good swirling corner. Yeah, they palm in there, even the likes of Tyler's looking to get in there as well. But as long as you've got men in position from Bristol City's point of view, you should be able to cope with that. Scott's header, McLaren forward, Scott. Good overlap from Beecham. Fjortoff running in the middle. Horlocks come to join them, comes to nothing. Martin Scott clears it away to Wayne Allison. He's well demolished from behind by Phil Klein. It looked like Phil Klein came off the worst out of that. Takes a bit to knock Brian Phil Klein over. I think Klein actually did make an attempt to play the ball, Angus, so it was undoubtedly a foul, the ball was getting played up to Wayne Allison, the only thing that Allison could have done with any was flick on, here's the incident, and Klein tried to get in there, tried to get his head in front, and unfortunately for his pains, he's injured himself. And the stretcher is now coming on. Well, they're not exactly overloaded with central defenders at the moment, Swindon, so this could be a real problem to them if Kuklang does, does have to go off. And he looks like he's got a nasty cut. He looks as though he's in a bit of pain there. And in fact, they're putting a neck brace on him, and it looks quite nasty for Kuklang, and that means, well, he will surely play no further part in this game, and that means Swindon are now without two central defenders. Of course, Sean Taylor is back in the studio. Uh, Brian Kilkline is now in uh, a certain amount of pain. If Kilkline does have to go, um, Ross McLaren can always pet the back alongside Cole Tyler, or failing that, you can draft Mark Robinson in from the right, hand, right back position to play alongside him, but uh, it looks a nasty injury. It looks like uh, Eddie Murray will be the replacement to come on.
Here's your collision again. Cathay's really just trying to come and win the ball. And he's fallen over. It's, it looked quite innocuous at the time, but he's, he's obviously injured quite badly. Well, there's no way he was going to come back from that. sort of reshuffle will this mean for Swindon and certainly taking some care over him anxious moment certainly for John Gorman and indeed for Brian Kilkline though he's always said what a good young player Eddie Murray is but uh, I'm sure he'd prefer to have the experience of Brian Kilkline on the pitch. And so, Brian Kilkline is very gingerly carried off the pitch. It's always a worrying sight when you see somebody stretching from the pitch. And the fact that uh, the Swindon phys Physio straight away put a neck brace on, uh, hopefully it doesn't look a good sign, but hopefully it'll be okay, big cook line. Well, it's not looking good for Swindon, but Swindon have been very good defensively in this match. Well, they've been playing 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 an experience for him. He's going to get an early touch. Wins the header from Wayne Allison, but it comes down to Fowler, who in turn finds Tinian. Away by Tyler. Fowler. It looks as though Swindon just made a straight swap. Eddie Murray straight into the back alongside Colt. Colt and, uh, in place of Brian Kilkline. So it shouldn't affect their side too much, Angus. It's not as though you've got to move two or three different players around just to contain the injury of one man. Well, well, he had only made one full league appearance before this season in the Swindon Town Colours. Robinson. Scott and towards Allison. Referee says play on. They look like a nasty boot coming in from Carl Tyler. And indeed, Allison is hobbling on the far side. That hurt. And uh, that ball is just played forward. That's where Allison would have been, but he's, he's hobbling. I think actually the referee made a good call because he, he saw the foul, but he also saw the fact that Allison had knocked the ball back to his teammate. He didn't want to stop Bristol City when they were in attacking momentum. He's now had a word with Big Tyler, I think, as well, and hopefully for City, Wayne Allison will be fit to continue. It's always amazing why defenders come and foul in that area, certainly in the centre of the park, because there's no chance of getting the ball, Matt Bryant. The only thing that uh, Andy Mutz could possibly have done because the ball was in the air was flick it on. So if Matt Bryant just resists his, his temptation to come in and foul, Swindon eventually would give the ball to Bristol City. Robinson. Away by Hansen. Allison. Tinian. Just sit down to Martin Scott. Murray. Happy to play them themselves out of defence, Swindon. Horlock up against Bent. Again, it's uh, Rob Edwards who gets the challenge in. A much improved player he's been this season. Bodin. McLaren, Fjortoft. Aldridge just can't quite control it. Tyler. Bowden. Beecham, who's 
shifted over to the left side, trying to get involved. Harriet. Here's Ross McLaren. Ends up the shot himself, which is uh, blocked by Anson. Bent. Too far for Anson. Partridge. Fowler. Tinian. Scott on the overlap. Partridge and Allison in front of them. And in the end, it was wasted. Russell Osman said that uh, part of the dynamism that they had last year down the left hand side with Scott and Tinian was so important to their play and for one reason or another they haven't been able to play each other with each other too much this season and that's perhaps one reason behind their poor performances partridge scott partridge again on the edge of the area this time he can't turn. McLaren. Orlock. Bowden. Play on, says the referee. Fultoff wanted the foul. It's Fowler. That's too short for Partridge. Murray brings it away. A good run. Fultoff out wide now. Foul by Harriet. It was also clever played by Fjortoft as well. I think when he knocked the ball past there, he thought maybe he knocked it a bit too far and just fell on top of him. And the Bristol City right back had to wait, give away the free kick. Here we see it. He just knocks it a bit too far and just eventually just falls on top of him just to make sure he gets a free kick. Well played, the Norwegian international. He didn't score midweek in the uh, European games. Although his side were 4-0 victors. Here's Bodin. Away by Hansen, straight back to Bodin. in play referee awards a corner I didn't think so so fifth corner of the half good ball in by Bone was it whipped in left foot both players have gone to I think it's Andy Murch actually tried to get a shot in on goal and the referee said it's came off Martin Scott corner for Swindon take it Scott and Tyler lurking deep which makes the run in the middle now that's deep towards Scott it's away by Bryant his Tinian Partridge in space Bent is the only other man forward looking for the early ball but Bent has to check Allison coming to join them now it's too far for Bent Bodin plays it into touch and Paul Bodin who didn't play in Wales's 5-0 thrashing he was on the bench Sure, that was painful for him to watch, as it was for the players to play in. Harriet. Bristol City's problem at the moment is the fact when they do get out of defence, Angus, and they've got out on a couple of occasions, they've looked to break. First and foremost, they haven't got enough players getting forward quickly enough from their own half. And secondly, when they've got the ball, certainly in the last third of the pitch, because nothing's really happened for them, they're, in, they're inclined to lose possession, they're inclined to try things which really aren't on. They should just keep possession for a while and try and work themselves an opening. But at the moment, they're wasting possession, the ball keeps going back to Swindon. Swindon get the ball down and they look to come out and play. Another chance to play now from the free kick. Horlock. Robinson coming in at the far post. Away by Bryant. In another corner. I just believe it's the difference between the two sides because when Swindon do get the ball, they are more patient. Maybe it's the year of spending in the Premiership, although they were relegated, but that year they learnt that if you do lose possession at the higher level, you never get the ball back. And that at the moment is possibly the difference between the two sides. Beecham's corner. Goal kick from Keith Scott's header, I think it was. Scott scored uh, eight times this season, forging a very profitable partnership with Jan Fjortoft. 
23 between them this year, and only Tranmere have a better striking pairing. On goal score, that is. Beecham bent streaking back to help out, and he was needed. Jordan will want him running that quickly down the other end, and not in his own half. Here's Bodin. Fjortoft turns well. The finish not quite as good as the turn. This was the race, wasn't it? I think little junior was like Harley Davidson, wasn't he, down the right-hand side there? Just managing to knock it out. Uh, good defensive work by primarily a midfield player, in fact, a winger. This is, we see so many swinging goals this way, don't we? Bodin looks up, Fjortaft always feeling his man, holding him off, and always managed to get a half turn, but couldn't quite get the shot on target. Bryant, who played in this corresponding fixture two years ago. Much inside to Fjortov. Can he turn again? Lays it off to Scott. Those two work so well together. Good ball in, wasn't it? Fjortov led it back to Scott. Unfortunately, though, he didn't see the run that Horlock made. Scott made good contact with his shot, but it was always going wide. If Fjortov had just maybe seen Horlock's run, Horlock would have been in a better position. Great layoff by Much, wasn't he? He got forward from midfield. That's where he does so well, Fjortov. Holds his man off so he can lay the ball away. The sort of role he plays for Norway. In trouble for Kite. Fjortov couldn't quite get there, but... Uh, he sort of plays as a lone striker up front, doesn't he, for Norway? He, he says uh, it's not a role that he actually likes playing if he prefers scoring the goals rather than setting them up. I think the reason is, Angus, that he's not the most hardest wo of working centre forwards, that's why. He was relying on other bits and pieces from his fellow central striker to play him in. He's someone who's really got to feed off people. Scott, working hard. Beecham. Fjortoft in space. Little chip over the keeper. Fjortoft has so much time and so much skill, and we've seen him score from those sort of positions before. It's just such a vision. Great vision. Just managed to get away from his defender. He's turned. He's seen where Kite is. He's tried a little dink. And here's Allison down the other end. Allison, great save from the keeper. A super save by Digby. Oh, just as we were watching one striker down one end. Well, it was another striker down the other who could so easily have put Bristol City into the lead if it wasn't for the super save from Fraser Digby. Uh, great chances, both ends. But we are still goalless here at Ashton Gate. Yes, this was Allison's chance, wasn't he? He's got in front of Tyler. He's taken the ball just a bit far too wide, really, at the time, Angus. And Digby, very, very good, stayed up as long as he possibly could and eventually made the block. Scott's made a mistake. Fjortoft, another corner. Here's much. McLaren. Again, wide of the target. Well, I think we can go down to pitch side and Marcus Dare, who has some news on the Brian Kilkline injury. Well, the news is that uh, he's got a very nasty gash under his right eye. It's going to need a couple of stitches, and he's also a bit dazed and confused, but otherwise he'll be OK. They're going to put the stitches on in the uh, dressing rooms. Manager John Gorman said it's just one of those things. Here's Beecham. 
play by Fowler. Thankfully, the crook line injury doesn't seem to be a long-term affair, so it may well be that uh, he's fit and available for Saturday, which is a relief to everybody. Here's Bowden. Edwards. Forward by Scott. Partridge trying to get round the back of Murray. Murray does well. I think Swindon have a midweek game against Burnley on Wednesday night, so we'll see if he's fit in time for that game. McLaren. Ten minutes of the first half to go, plus, of course, a substantial amount of injury time. Because of Kilkline's injury. Advertisers will be very happy about that. I think uh, Keith Scott got four faults and he did a refusal, wasn't it? He didn't want to leap the fence. You just feel as though Swindon are really starting to turn some pressure onto Bristol City at the moment. The passing is certainly better. The, four, the, the two fullbacks, Robinson on the right and Bowden on the left, they're both getting forward, they're both the outlet, and at the moment they seem to be putting Bristol City back into their own half. Scott. A touch for Beecham. He was trying to find Andy Much. Hansen read it well. And a foul by Tyler on Allison. Taken quickly by Tinian. Forward to Partridge. Tyler with time. Robinson gets it at the second attempt. Ball off. And that's far too short for Bodie. Junior Bent. Hasn't really had a chance to stretch his legs, Junior Bent. Wayne Allison, who's been troubled by a hamstring injury all season. The uh, game he played was in October. Bowden. He's talking about Junior Ben. I guess I just believe it. He hasn't really had the ball at any stage in, fr in front of him in which he's got a chance to run at Bowden or even Horlock in front of him. I think, you know, young Marvin Harriet's really he's got to come out of his shell from the right back position and look to support him. You know, look to, he's got loads of pace himself, Harry. And if Bent's taking players on, if he's confronted by two all the time, namely Horlock and Bowden, he's got to stop. And, you know, Harry's got to come inside of him. He's got to use his pace. He's got to say to Junior, look, if you run at these two players, I'm always there behind you as your support. And just give him that little bit of confidence. But at the moment, Junior can't seem to get any supply of ball to him. Here is Harriet defending. He won't get there before Scott. Bowden again. Edwards. That is. And away the foul, which uh, Bryant didn't like, and the referee goes straight into his pocket to book Matt Bryant. Perhaps he said something that uh, Mr. Wright didn't like. I think he may be doubting his parentage, Angus, actually. Not a wise move. This was a problem. This is, it was actually. Hands up, wasn't it? I think it's Beecham actually stuck his hands up, which is what Bristol City thought the foul was going to be given for. And eventually was given the other way. One or two of them had a little shout up, and unfortunately for City, Bryant's in the book. Dangerous position. Here goes Horlock. And it's wide. There's a little bit of movement over the ball just to try and put Phil Kite off. It's actually a good strike by Horlock, but it was always at least three or four feet wide of Kite's near post. Lots of movement, decent strike, but really you're gonna, you've got to hit the target. You've got to make the goalkeeper make a save, especially when you get a free kick that's in the centre of the goal. Murray.
Scott. Here's Partridge. Bent is in space. Can Tinian now find him? Still Tinian. Partridge. Floated towards Allison. In the end, nothing just really clicked at all. Yeah, the ball just gets gets played in eventually, doesn't it? And to be fair, Alice, he's not going to score from there. But I just felt initially when the first ball, that the, the, the one that was played through Partridge, just touch, just took him away from the goal and a deep. Half decent first six would have taken him much nearer. He might be able to get a strike on goal. Bent was in space over on the right side if he could have seen him. Clarence free kick towards Scott. Well, they've had a difficult time away from home, Swindon, this season. Just three points out of a possible 21. Here's Tinian, though. Just couldn't quite find Allison Rob Edwards. Much brings it away. A goal kick. Just uh, three minutes left on the clock, plus time added on for stoppages. But quite naturally, Mark, I mean, it has been Swindon's away form that, that has let them down. They have three points out of a possible 21. It's the worst in the league, and that's why they're mid-table. Yeah, the only thing the only things I've seen them perform today, you can't really understand why, because they've looked at very, very organised. You know, they're good going forward. They can play on the break, and they've made themselves one or two chances today. But obviously, away from home, normally, the defence is very, very susceptible. Well, it hasn't been yet this afternoon, as Piotr gives away another foul. Bent keeps it in well. Allison, Harriet. Well, the linesman said one thing, the referee said another, and now they're going to have a chat about it. And I think the outcome will be it will be a throw in to Swindon. I think the linesman was actually signalling that the ball was out. The referee gave a free kick. And <laughs> I can't believe that the referee has changed the decision. And the referee was far, far closer. And the linesman ever was very strange. Another great challenge from Rob Edwards. And it's never going to find Wayne Allison. McLaren, Bowden, and Edwards firing up the midfield. And Joe Jordan is off his bench, having a word with the referee. I think it might be more than one, Angus. Let's hope the uh, referee couldn't understand him. This is the difference because Swindon are prepared to get the ball at the back. They're prepared to stretch Bristol City and draw them out and eventually get the players in. Tinian. Partridge is through. Again, his first touch lets him down. Robinson in trouble. And gets it away. Tinian. Partridge. Tinian again. Here's Edwards. Fowler out wide. It's Fowler. Will he try a shot himself? In the first touch lets him down. Swindon will try and break, break but uh, Fowler and Edwards get it back. And just for a moment, and then over Bristol City. And they've given it away again. What can they do this time? Martin Scott. Over the top towards Partridge. a long ball it wasn't in by Scott Partridge for a moment looks as though he's in but good goalkeeper by Digby he's got 40 50 yards in which to see the play and he's coming playing it for his side Hanson Tinian 
word with McLaren after the challenge. It wasn't exactly a battle of the sprinters, was it, those two? And you might fancy your chances in a 100-metre sprint against those two. Towards Allison. Tinian. Now in time being added on the stoppages, which I would have thought will be a couple of minutes. Martin Scott, good run. Partridge, deflection and over the bar. But uh, just again, a little glimmer of hope for City coming through Scott Partridge. It was Scott, wasn't it? Scott's actually taken somebody on, which has made an opening. It's committed defenders. As a deflection off Tyler, and City have got a corner. That's what the fullbacks have got to do. They've got to commit themselves. In this case, Scott's come inside, played a lovely little ball into Partridge. Fortunately for Swindon, Tyler's got the block. The flag is up for offside. A poor cross. Doesn't matter, it uh, runs out for a goal kick anyway. But certainly the best chances of the half for Bristol City coming from Scott Partridge. Yeah, he just clipped the bar as well, didn't he, early? You just feel as though, in watching City, it's very much 4-4-2 angers, isn't it? They all seem very, very rigid, all seem to be sat into the system where they've got to get the full-backs forward, they've got to make the extra man. You know, at the moment, they're playing four at the back against just two Swindon forward players. And it's so, so easy just to sit there and in your armchair, but they've got to come out and they've got to work hard, the two full-backs, and get forward and join in the play when it's down their side. Fjortoft, Robinson. Beecham again. Ball on. Odin outside him. Choose to come inside. Fjortoft. And he turned. But he was fouling Hansen again. Well, I have to be quite honest with you. I'm not too sure about that at all. Good little ball in by Hull. And all Fjortoft is doing, he's, he's backing into his man, which is a forward you've got to do anyway. And Hansen's slightly fortunate because he's all arms and legs all over him. Good little ball in by Hull. Knows exactly where Fjortov's going to be. He's rolled his defender more than anything. I think he's fortunate to get away with a free kick there, Hansen. And so far, he's done a good job. There got Hansen. So there's Martin Scott. <laughs> Climbing by Carl Tyler. No much doubt about that. Free kick is taken quickly. Bent now on the charge. And once again, stopped by two players. Orlock and Bodin have been on him straight away as soon as he's ever got the ball. It won't count. Foul on Digby. Referee blew straight away. And I'm sure there was little doubt about it. Yeah, Harriet's balling, wasn't it? Quite high and quite long towards the far post. And certainly Alice has made contact with Digby. It wasn't the most obvious of fouls. Here the ball comes in. Far post, Digby's always got his eyes on the ball. In comes Allison. I think he had a hand on his shoulder, which possibly meant the goal was choked off. But goalkeepers get so much protection nowadays anyway. Here's a chance. But it's cut out by Murray. Just a little bit of life left in this first half yet. Edwards shrugged off by Fjortov. He gives away the foul. What am I doing wrong? He says. been in such exceptional form of late. Fjortov. And there goes the half-time whistle. It's been a half of few chances. Scott Partridge has had a couple of efforts for Bristol City. And Fjortov has come closest for Swindon Town. But the half-time score is Bristol City nil. Swindon nil. Here's Marcus Dare with Andy Rowland. Well, Andy, how happy are you with the first half? Uh, we've done OK. Um, things are pretty even at the moment. 
Bristol City have had a couple of chances, but as the game went on, I thought we got into it a little bit more, and hopefully we can go on again and take it from here. Best moments when your backs have pushed forward? Yeah, we've got the full backs forward well, and we've created a few chances from corners, so, you know, we'll just keep this going. Hoping for your second win now? Well, obviously, you know, we've been waiting for it for a long time, so hopefully it'll be here today. Thank you very much, Andy. So at half-time, it's Bristol City nil, Swindon Town nil. We'll have a look at the first half highlights with our two studio guests, Mark Shale and Sean Taylor, in just a couple of minutes. Excuse me, Sir Brian. Got the present, sir? Of course, Bob. Enough in the whip round then. Seventy-five pounds and fourteen p. Fourteen p? You put that in? I don't suppose you bought it with your uh, with my Barclay card? Oh yes, obviously. Boff. I had a Manila envelope stuffed with cash, and so naturally I used Barclay card. Well, it would have been insured against loss or damage. Boff. This is the wedding of the daughter of the head of MI7. Well, there are four men on the roof, two in the choir, and the vicar has no previous convictions. I think that's ample insurance for a China teapot. matured twice as long as most premium lagers and it cuts through first so when your mouth's rough as a roofer's glove make it your first choice strongbow what your first needs first every time you buy 12 pounds worth of so fuel you can get your on a three-hour Philips videotape for only 99p. Time after time after time. So fast forward to SO. Cargo Club offers members a massive range of top brands at warehouse prices. It's open now, so come and take a free peek before you join. With Christmas just around the corner, it's worth checking out the prices. Jump in your car and go to Cargo Club. Castle Court. Bristol. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the home buyers. All of you have, at one time or another, worried about how much your monthly repayments might or might not be. Ah, but have you ever thought of finding out through Nationwide's quick quote? Oh, you haven't? Oh, well, in that case, you will be even more interested in the virtues of our sponsor's product. Home buying without a hitch. Building a future with Nationwide, the building society. Welcome back. It's goalless at Ashton Gate. The half-time score in the West Country derby, Bristol City nil, Swindon Town nil. Watching the first half with me in the studio were City skipper Mark Shale and Swindon defender Sean Taylor. Would Swindon be happy? Very much so. I mean, John will be really pleased. I mean, no goals, no goals against. I mean, we haven't scored yet, but the way things have been going up late, he'd be really pleased with that. What, what about City? Would they be happy with that? Yeah, I think we probably made the best chance of the first half and uh, definitely some encouraging points. Yeah, the first, the first chance we saw, of course, was Scott Partridge's shot, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it was. Uh, I think Rob Edwards won a, won a great tackle on the edge of the Swindon area, and he swilled and hit it first time, and uh, just clipped the top of the bar. Very unlucky, I thought. Mm. Yeah, City's tactics were obviously to use the smaller men, they use their speed across the uh, across the ground. Exactly, they're very quick, and they're, I think Scott Partridge has looked uh, very lively, and has caused problems for Swindon. Mm. But Junior Bent patrolled down the back, down the right hand side there, really, isn't he? That's right. I mean, with um, Paul and Kevin, Kevin's predominantly a fullback anyway. There, I think John's like so keep an eye on those, keep an eye on Junior, and they've done mm. very well there. Yes, Swindon had to reorganise their defence though after Brian Kilkline was, was was an unlucky injury. What did you make of it? It was knocked in the air, and I think he obviously it was a foul against against him against with Wayne, and it seemed to just land awkwardly. I mean, we all thought he'd done something to his neck, but I think that was precautionary. I think they said he he had a cut above the eye, or whatever. But how I much think... of a problem would that be for Swindon though? We've had a few problems with defenders getting injured at the moment, but I mean, I mean, we've got Edwin Murray just come in, he's a young lad, and I think he'd do very well. Mm. The problems for, for Bristol City were really centred around uh, Jan Fjortov. We, we thought he'd be the danger man, didn't we? Yeah, he's a, he's a very dangerous customer. We've seen him a couple of times with his back to goal, and uh, he's very good at turning his marker, and he's done that a couple of times, but uh, fortunately he hasn't hit the target yet. Yeah, superb control on the ball, isn't it? Yeah, he's always... I mean, that's, that's his forte this season, especially. Mm. Yes, here he is again. It's a lovely turn, and could have, could have, gone, could have gone in, couldn't it? He's, he's unlucky there. I mean, he does this so well. Back to goal. He'd be unlucky with the chip, actually. <laughs> so a man to keep an eye on in the second half. But almost immediately, we got back up to the other end, and uh, and a good save from Fraser Digby off Wayne Allison. Yeah, Wayne did very well to lose his marker. I think it was Carl Tyler, and he tried to go round Fraser, and he, he made a very good save. That was probably the best chance of the game. Mm. And City actually got the ball in the net, didn't they? In the end, where we won't see, we see the save again from a different angle. Fraser Digby did, ve did very well, but he, he couldn't... I don't know what happened in the... Uh, Wayne Allison got the ball into the net. How did you see it? Um, well, like Mark said before, he, he, was, he wasn't sure, really. But, I mean, I mean, keepers do fair, do get preferential treatment there. And oh, I, th I think it was a foul. <laughs> what, what, was your, what was your view, Mark? I thought he was very lucky, in fact. I think if you watch it here, Wayne Allison's actually headed it and won it very well. And, uh, as you say, keepers do tend to get the, the vote there, but I think he was very fortunate. Mm. Very quickly, what would uh, City boss have said to his players going into half-time? I think he'd say there's a lot of encouraging points from the first half and carry on doing what we're doing and uh, go out and try and win the game and be as positive as we've been. Mm. Still going according to your prediction? That's right. I mean, no, no goals against and all we need now is 1-4 one, one and then we'll be winning. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see more from both Mark and Sean later, but we must take another short break now. Don't go away. Kellogg's Bran Flakes are an easy way to get into a healthier lifestyle. Let's go to the barn! They have more fibre than most other cereals. They're low in fat, but taste great. And down, up, and down, up. And down. OK, people, you're looking good. Well, I think I'll go for the barn tomorrow. Kellogg's Bran Flakes, a step in the right direction. Tales of the Black Horse, the lightning loot. Once, there was a giant who was tired of clamping about the land, putting the wind up, people. So he raided his nest egg <coughs> and went to buy a cart. <coughs> Where's these giant carts, then, eh? Um, how much have you got? Now you need twice as much. I'm a bit short at the moment. Um, don't worry, I know just the people. Now the card salesman knew that Lloyd's Bank can agree a personal loan on the spot. Sorry. Perfectly all right, sir. <laughs> See, what did I tell you? And the moral of our story, if you need to get your skates on, come to Lloyd's Bank for a personal loan. The Lightning Loan, another legendary service from Lloyd's Bank. With its new extra active formula, Duracell now lasts up to 10,000 beats longer. New Duracell Extra Active for extra life. Have you ever wondered how the little widget thing in new John Smith's draft actually works? Then you're very sad. Carl 
Cargo Club offers members a massive range of top brands at warehouse prices. It's open now, so come and take a free peek before you join. With Christmas just around the corner, it's worth checking out the prices. Jump in your car and go to Cargo Club. Castle Court, Bristol. After every shave, new Lynx System Aftershave Gel with two active moisturizers takes care of your skin. I need to communicate. 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 I need an EC. Welcome back. We'll be returning live to Ashton Gate in time for the second half of Bristol City against Swindon Town and hoping for one or two goals. The two other games are being played in the First Division this afternoon. At Ayrson Park, the half-time score is Middlesbrough nil, Wolves nil. The other match is Burnley, just, ab just above City in the table, against Sheffield United. Our commentators John Helm and Chris McMenemy. Oh, as that roar goes up as Burnley find good possession here. And Adrian Heath made some great ground. And into the area he goes. If he pulls this one back, they're in trouble. Here's Robinson. A goal for Burnley. Did it cross the line? I thought it did. It did. Yes, he, he had a tremendous run. The discipline we talked about just left Sheffield United for a little bit there. But that's pure skill. A great little ball to the far post. Kills everybody. And a downward header which just about creeps in as it does there. You can see that on the replay inside the far post. Kevin Gage tries to get around and does so successfully. It's an own goal, although Kevin Gage is going to take most of the credit for it. Justin Flo may have stuck out a boot as well. He's got his arms raised. Did it go in off Randall? It's an equaliser, that's all that matters. And what a great time for Dave Bassett's team to score on the stroke of half-time. Well, Mark Shale, good to see a goal from a City old boy, Liam Robinson. Yeah, Liam's doing very well for Burnley, as you know, and uh, scoring a lot of goals. And uh, he was a very popular player down at Ashton Gate in the dressing room, and uh, the boys will be very pleased that he scored today. And special interest for Swindon in Burnley, because you're playing them this week, aren't you? That's right, we've got them Wednesday, and then that'll be... We've got Luton again on Saturday at home, so there's two home games. Right, it's almost time now for the second half at Ashton Gate. Our commentary team, Mark Lawrence and Angus Scott, have, time, have had time to get a Bovril or something stronger inside them. So let's go straight across and join them. Mark, what do you make of the first half then? I thought that uh, Swindon just shaded it in terms of possession, although on chances, Wayne Allison had, I think, the best chance of the game so far when he's through one-on-one -on -one with Fraser Digby. I just feel, from Bristol City's point of view, they can commit one or two more men forward at the moment. They're all sat in positions, very 4-4-2, very, very rigid. Swindon, because of their possession game, because they can keep the ball longer, and because they can draw teams out, they look the better side at the moment. But the game just needs a goal, Angus. All right, Mark, thanks very much. We'll uh, get on with the second half now. Swindon to get the second half underway. We're just waiting for a signal to go to the referee. He's received it. And we're off. Well, the news at half time is that uh, Brian, Brian Kilkline, sorry, has had four stitches in a head wound. And already uh, there's a player down. That's Rob Edwards. Must admit, I uh, didn't actually see the incident. Well, he looks to be in a certain amount of pain as well. That looks like a shoulder. 
He just came straight from the kicker. Yeah, there's a big kiss got running through, and he's, he's just caught him. He's knocked his elbow back, and he's gone down a certain amount of pain. I suggest that was probably more of an elbow, if anything. An elbow injury, certainly. Buster's the man to look after it. And it's very, very ginger at the moment, Angus. No pun intended. Of course not. Well, he seems to be all right and uh, can carry on. And we're told there are a few heated uh, words exchanged between both managers at half-time as they went up the tunnel, uh, both with differing opinions and uh, ideas on why Matt Bryant was in fact booked. I don't think uh, Joe Jordan was very happy with the decision. He was having a word with the referee. And John Gorman had his own opinion, which, funnily enough, was not the same as Joe Jordan's. Marriott. with instructions, as Mark said, to push further forward in this second half. Horlock, away by Tinian. Allison, very deeply. Partridge, the only player forward. Tyler. Murray. Forward to Fjortoft. Back inside to Scott. And Beecham overran it, so too did everyone else. Still Beecham. And much! And Bent wins the throw. It's the first real chance of the second half. The ball gets played at from Murray. Good layoff, and Scott knows exactly what a lovely little back heel. Fortunately, beat him, comes and overruns the ball. But he has a presence of mind, he can't get his shot in on target. Here's a strike from Much, and Scott managed to get his back in the way of it. Bent. Partridge. Given away to Horlock. Edwards. Brave enough to go in for the challenge. After injuring his elbow. And Tinian just dwelt too long. And you just see a swarm of Swindon players around the ball. City players in confidence. Away by Hansen for another corner. First of his second half. And he's looked uh, quite an interesting prospect, uh, Mark. Yes, it's a case of so far so good for him. Ball in by Much. And the dummy comes from Scott. And Hansen has a presence of mind just to clear it for a corner. Good decision making. Beecham then with this corner. Fjortoff's inside the Six-yard box, the only man there for Swindon. Away by Scott, and it'll be another corner. Bristol City have conceded a lot of corners, Angus, but so far I think they've defended them very, very well. It's a near-post corner primarily that Swindon looked to play, more often than not coming in from Beecham, but uh, they defended very, very well, Bristol City. They've got the numbers back, and someone's always attacked the ball. This time, it's Robinson to take it. It's deep towards Tyler, away by Edwards. Bowden now, and over the bar. As you were saying, Mark, the corner count in the first half was 7-2 in Swindon's favour. Here's the latest corner, and the ball bobbles up somewhat for Bodie, but there's a good presence of mind from Partridge, is that primarily a striker who's got his foot in there and made it very, very difficult for him. Here's Robinson's corner, delivered to the far post. Eventually the ball gets a knockdown to Bodie. Good first touch, he's looking to hit it on the volley, it sits up and in, but Partridge is in there and makes him blast it over. Is bent now for Bristol City. Again, watched by Kevin Horlock extremely closely. And can't make an avenue through. Harriet Fowler. Bryant. Just under pressure by Much. Robinson. Bent, it's away from Horlock this time. Still bent as well. Tinian cuts inside, good ball to Allison. Tinian can't get round Tyler, good covering. Better play from Bristol City though, Angus, it's one-touch football. 
playing the ball in and just following it, and really it's looking to turn Swindon around brighter for them. Scott, it's the cross in, Allison is far post, and Tyler again, the man to get it away, and he'll go away for a corner, uh, throw in. There is Tyler. Could be a useful month that he is here, depending on how quickly Brian Kilkline recovers. That's a poor ball, and City have given it away again. Short off, uh, too far for him. Side. And Edwards is there for Bristol City. Harriet bent. Needs to run at them now. With already two players around him. And once again, Swindon come out on top. Bent takes the quick throw. Towards Allison. Needs to get a good nod on. Tyler away. Beecham. Allison putting Robinson under pressure. And it'll run out for a goal kick. That's something that Bristol City have to do better than they did in the first half, is put Swindon, when they've got the ball, under pressure. Just make it difficult for them. I just thought in the first half that Bristol City, because they had this rigid formation, they all jogged back into position and sat in there and said, right, try and play through us. But if they do start to put players under pressure, eventually someone will make a mistake. If you make a mistake in your own half, it will set Bristol City onto the attack. That could be on the attack now. Sinian chooses to play it back to Scott. It's over the top to Partridge. Too far. The crowd may well get agitated now. They haven't seen many goals here at Ashton Gate this season. In fact, it's uh, only five at home. Bryant, no man up front. Here's Allison. Support now from Partridge. He'll just run off the side of the pitch. Tinian's run forward now. That's meant for Tinian. Controls it well. Allison first time. Great save. Bent. They may not have seen many goals at Ashton Gate this season, but they've seen one now. And the goal scorer is Junior Bent, a man that Joe Jordan brought to Ashton Gate. And he puts Bristol City into the lead. Good shot from Alison, wasn't it? And Bent doing what all right-sided midfield should, players should do. And the ball comes back off the goalkeeper. He's made the goal. Good play, though, by City. Possibly the best play that so far in the half. Good ball up to Tinian. He held the ball up, shielded up. Lovely little pass into the feet of Alison. First time shot. Good save by Digby. Nothing wrong with that, Angus. But there's Junior Bent to put City in front. And it's only taken nine minutes of the second half. Bristol City are in the lead. It's exactly what the game needed as well. Did indeed, Mark. And a free kick given against Fjortov. Well, that would certainly bring a bit of life into this game. It's only Bent's second goal of the season. It must be the influence Joe Jordan has on there, maybe. I'm not saying anything. And he's often been criticised for missing his chances, Junior Bent. But uh, surely there was no way he could have missed that one. And a mistake now by Tyler. And I just wonder how important that could be for Bristol City's season. saying that the fans here have only seen five goals all year. They wouldn't mind if that was the only goal they saw this afternoon. Here's Partridge. Tinian's just pulled off deep. Away by Robinson. Bent now. There's a pull cross.
difference is just far too close to the goalkeeper, isn't it? Criminal, really, just after you've scored as well. You just want to swim one away, penalty spot, and stick your players in there and see if you can make something happen. Murray forward, Scott. Tinian. Scott again. Partridge. Lovely control. Tinian. It's towards Allison. Here's Partridge, surely number two. Allison! It's two. And Ashton Gate goes mad. Allison scores. And Joe Jordan's magic is sparkling all over Bristol City. The Scotsman returns after four years, and his side are now 2-0 up. And so it's Tinian's ball in, wasn't it? It's a poor header, actually, by Young Murray. He just closed his eyes, he doesn't know where it's gone. Good control by... There's Partridge, who waited too long. It's actually the defender who played Alisson in as well there, Angus, but Alisson accepted the present with glee. Here we have it again. Tinian spar post cross, poor header by Murray. Good control by Partridge. A big time who made next contact and then Allison stuck it in the back of the net. Two goals in a couple of minutes for City. Well, and that was Brian Tinian. And they were watching that replay, has just blasted one wide, but it's uh, one way traffic at the moment. And Swindon's poor away form continues. And they noticed as soon as that goal went in, Joe Jordan was off his bench, not cheering, but giving instructions to his team, saying, You hold on to this lead and you keep it and you are not going to lose it. Well, they don't have to do anything stupid now. The two goals to nil up. They've just got to invite Swindon back into them and defend properly and sensibly at the right times. Swindon now on the tack. Bowden forward to Scott. It's 2-1. And Scott scores his ninth. And this game is not over yet. Well, we've gone from one defensive blunder to another because I actually thought Phil Kite... He's got his hands to the ball there. He should have saved that. Good ball by Bowden. He's waited. He's drawn the defender. Slipped a little ball in. Just came off Hanson. It's got, it's got the left foot on it. But to be honest with you, Phil Kite's dived over it. He should have stopped that. It's Here we have it again. Bowden's little ball through the middle. Just a left foot. It's a real stab more than anything. And, and Kite really has got his hands to it. He should have saved that. He's complaining to his defenders, but he's played to stop those. First half was a trifle disappointing. There's nothing disappointing about this second half. We've had three goals in five minutes. Maybe one of the managers heard us at half time when we said the game needs a goal. Never thought of going back into management, Mark. Pass. see the team score a goal and then concede one within a matter of a couple of minutes. Allison put pressure on Digby. Digby takes very quick evasive action. And Wayne Allison has got a good sense of humour. Like he's trying to say he wasn't interfering with play. And until he was in the penalty area with the ball and just about to score. Anyway. Fjortoft. Edwards again in strong weight. And once more, Allison Fowler. Robinson coming back to help out. And he is fouled by Fowler. And at least the game has come to life. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the next 30 minutes of play will be pretty frantic. Bowden. Fjortoft. Fjortoft! That's a good save from Phil Kite. Did everything asked of him this time, because Fjortoft thought he was curling it into the corner. And Kite denied him. 
Again, it's Bowden, Angus. He always gets forward. Great play by Fjortov. Good early touch. He's looking to bend it in the corner, and Phil Kite's made his immense for his mistake before. Kite came late to punch away the corner. In the end, a shot from much was blasted wide. Matt Bryant desperately trying to calm his players around him in defence. We were just talking about before about how you, you, you've got to get your full backs forward in a 4 4 2 system. Here's a corner that comes in, and Kai, pretty the confidence has come out. He's made the punch, it's quite a good punch actually. It's reached the edge of the 18 yard block, and, and Scott's managed to make the block. But it's important, certainly, when you see Bowden do it for Swindon, he's very, very good at making up the numbers, coming in and joining in with loads of space to play. Here goes Bent, he's gone round two men. Tinian is out wide on the left. That's forward to Bent again. Digby's committed. The cross comes in. Allison is 3-1. And Junior Bent is playing out of his skin. And Allison has his second. Nothing wrong with Bent there. Well, he's had an injection of something at half-time. I'm not sure what it is. And a cracking goal. Good bowling, wasn't it, by Tinian? And Junior Bent's coming up. Why Fraser Digby's come, Angus, I will never, ever know. He's got all sorts of defenders back there. Murray can't make the header. Allison's at the far post. A great cross from Bent. And City are back to 3-1. Here it is. Away from the goalkeeper, Fraser Digby. He's got no earthly chance of catching him there. Don't know why he's come. But it's a great ball. On his wrong foot as well. I'll be pleased with that. And we're just saying... At half time, that we needed to see more of Junior Bent with the ball in front of him, and there's the prime example his pace. And he can go around players, and this time it was around Digby. Allison is back. Allison now has six goals. Sounds like we've got a crowd here, they must have just turned up, I think. I don't know where they've all come from. Flick on by Allison. Partridge. McLaren. His clearance. It's a poor one, but it goes to Beecham. Edwards again. Scott does well. Bryant. That was too short for Tinian. Allison. Fjortov. <laughs> Hanson did well, Tinian flying in there. Oh, leave it! Leave it! And they give a free kick. Referee. Yeah, good decision. Then. I thought it was just a good decision by the referee because he waited to see if Much could actually find another yellow shirt with a pass. He couldn't, and he's given a free kick. And the fans have something to cheer about, certainly. Here's Beecham's. Well, went all the way through from Beecham's free kick. Quite, doesn't quite know how it went all the way. Well, in the end, I think he had to make that save. Yes, it's travelled a long way from Beecham's free kick, isn't it? I think it's much actually just got half a foot on it, and a good save by Kite. Well, he's going in the corner as well. Scott can't get there. There's a player down in the box. The referee's going to play on Bowden. The cross comes in towards Tyler. Using his height well, Carl Tyler. Six foot three. Good play by Bowden, wasn't it? Slipped his man, gave him the old shake, stood the cross up, and Tyler head and shoulders above everybody, but couldn't quite hit the target with his header. Just stood the cross up, didn't he? Said, go on, get your head on that. Which Tyler did, but failed to hit the frame make of the ball. Van Ball of Scott, but I think he was going after his face. There is Scott again. Much. Bowden once more. Fjortov almost got the other side of Hansen. Bowden down to the byline again. And Bryant, it is this time, who puts it away for yet another corner.
Bowden's a real lethal weapon as he gets down the left-hand side. Great cross again, but good defended by Matt Bryant. Corner comes in again, and it's Bryant once more. Bowden, Horlock. Little chip over the top once more to Bowden. This time he can't control it, and Tinian gets it away. McLaren in again. Oh, the player's offside there from Swindon, but uh, the flag didn't go up. Fowler. Allison now. Early ball to Partridge. Well, you just notice that he hasn't got a whole host of players running to support him. He must feel City are happy to sit on this two goal advantage. Edwards. Fowler. Bent. Fowler. Still Fowler. And he can't take it round Beecham. Allison, good tackle. Bent. Fowler again. Harriet in support. And he just slowed the pace down. And Harriet succeed where Bent has failed down that right wing. And get round Bowden. Better play from City though. They were prepared to keep the ball, prepared to draw Swinning out until they got themselves in a better position to attack. See now the likes of Tinian and Edwards uh, drop back and they've left Wayne Allison up front. Tinian, open goal. Good save by Diffie. He did well to cover his ground and get back in between the posts. It's good play by both players, actually, because Digby's not made the best of punches, Angus. Comes to Tinian, he's hit it left foot very, very firmly, but Digby stood his ground, and he's made a good save after his mistake. Yeah, this is certainly a luxury for Bristol City fans. They haven't seen... Three goals here this season, scored by their side. Bag is up, it's got Patches just a yard offside. Football never ceases to amaze you, does it? In the first half, there's hardly a defensive mistake made by both sides, and now we've had at least three out of the four goals. Martin Scott for Bristol City. Touched by Fjortov, has to go round Bryant. Hanson, on the ball forward for Allison to chase. And Murray did well first and then made a dreadful mistake. And Tyler has to put it away. It must be uh, very difficult for Swindon, Mark. I mean, with two central defenders that haven't played together before and hardly a first-team game between them recently because Tyler's been in the reserves for Nottingham Forest. Yes, it's very difficult, and the fact that they've lost Kilclang as well. That's deep towards Allison again. Nod down towards Tinian. And just wouldn't sit down for him. Seen Brian Tinian smile in recent weeks like that. I think it's important actually that is the replay of the, uh, the Tinian shot. Deep cross again. Good header by Allison, directed it back. Unfortunately, he couldn't get his, his leg and his knee over the ball. Tinian blasted it high and wide. I think for Swindon, the first thing they've got to do now is they've got to forget about the defensive mistakes that they've made. They've got to start to win the ball back from Bristol City and then they've got to impose their style on Bristol City. But they've also got to start to look a bit further forward earlier Angus instead of just keeping the ball all the time the 3-1 down they'd obviously without wishing to be state the obvious they need a couple of goals to get themselves back in the game I think you just stated the obvious it's a goal kick
20 minutes of the second half left. Bristol City leading by three goals to one. Big Hans has done well as in his debut for Bristol City at the back. He gets a tackle in on Scott. Scott has a last touch, and the referee made the right decision. Yeah, Hans has done well, and I don't know what, uh, what length his short-term contract is. If he keeps playing like this, I think he's going to get a long-term one. Scott, and forward to Partridge, not too far again. Tinian. Partridge, didn't quite get the touch he wanted. Robinson. Allison. And Digby came for a moment, but saw Partridge was going to get there first. Good turn by Partridge. It's away by Bodin. up for a foul by Hansen, it's taken quickly now. Much, Bodin once more on the overlap. Horlock, Bodin stayed out wide, good interception from Fowler, needed to be. And Bodin was round the back again. McLaren. Fjortoft. Towards Scott. It's yet again, another corner. Hogan to take it. Fjortoft again inside the six-yard box. That's aimed towards Scott. Away once more by Bryant. He's been solid in the air this afternoon. Bodin once more though. Towards Tyler. Much. What a great save by Kite again. He may have been culpable for the first goal, but he's kept them with their three goals to one lead. That was another cracking save from Phil Kite. Yeah, everybody get underneath it here. And much at the far post. Direct his header towards the far post. Great save by Kite. Here's Bodin. He's gone round his man again. Can he get a good telling cross in? And Beecham just overran it. And City had the chance to bring it away. Here's Bent. A strong challenge from Robinson. And Claren did well. But not with the pass. Fowler. It's over the top towards Bent. Robinson has that. Just over it, the pass didn't he, Murray? It's, uh, because of the condition, slid away from Robinson. And uh, could be in the basketball league if he does that every week. And a substitution. Ross McLaren goes off. And it's uh, Wayne O'Sullivan, the man to come on, who will uh, hit the bottom dollar. He'll be scampering around midfield in the last 15 minutes. Well, we got it slightly wrong, didn't we? Because we thought McLaren would last about 70, so we're five minutes out. So. He looked a bit tired, the poor old boy. Extra legs of O'Sullivan. What difference will he make? He was certainly impressed this season, Wayne O'Sullivan. And unfortunately, he lost his place when he was injured. And the first thing he does 
is give away a free kick. A shoulder charge on Martin Scott. Bringing us living on is possibly the last throw of the dice force winning, and also what they've done, Angus. They stuck him on the right hand side, and Beecham's going to go and play away on the left hand side, looking to play four up front virtually and stretch Bristol City at the back. Well, that's where Beecham is on the left side. That's Harriet's header, Fjortoft. Edwards read it well. Murray forward. Too far for Beecham. And we talk about pressure on managers, uh, Mark. I just wonder how much pressure there'll be on John Gorman after, at the moment, seems like another away defeat for Swindon. Well, most certainly there'll be pressure every time a, a manager loses a game, certainly in two in succession. I think it's actually three now that there will always be pressure, but you have to say in John Gorman's defence that uh, he's lost, what, three central defenders now at least. He's got a central defender in on loan today, a virtual kid he's had to go and play at the back, so you're always going to have problems, Angus. Another indecision there. And it's Beecham who's got through. Scott is running forward. Once more, it's Bryant who gets it away. And once more, it's Rob Edwards who gets in with a strong challenge. Their away form doesn't make happy reading for Swindon Town fans. 1-1, one, one, drawn none, lost six. Here's Edwards again. A little chip over the top was meant for Allison. Bowden. Bryant. Bent. Here's Fowler. Uses Allison wisely. Allison. Yes. Taking up the time. As the clock ticks away. Allison, lovely turn. Good interception from Murray because Scott Partridge was cruising in. Yes, it was Allison back to his best. And a good little ball in by Fowler. Nice first touch, taken away from Tyler. Good cross, but good defended by young Murray. What a difference. Confidence in a couple of goals makes to Wayne Allison. Tinian's corner. It's towards Allison. Half punch by Digby. Full clearance from Bodin. by Joe Jordan to bring in Vergard Hansen. Uh, hasn't seen that much of him. Could have, of course, played the experienced Stuart Munro, but uh, he chose otherwise. I think Joe Jordan's absolutely delighted with the performance of his side. They were very, very disciplined in the first half. It's that real discipline, actually, in the first half which they expanded a bit on in the second half. That's got them the 3-1 uh, the scoreline so far. He will be delighted with that in his first game back in charge. Tinian. The room for Edwards. Bent. Beecham is back to help out Bodin. Bent. Did enough for the Bodin. You can see how well the home fans think Junior Bench played. They're even applauding him when he knocks a cross in behind the goals.
Fjortoft. The forward is made by Beecham. Still Fjortoft. Now much. Spread it wide. Robinson's pushed forward. Try shot himself. Flag is up for offside. Referee has chosen to ignore it at the moment. And in fact, play will go on. Bowden again, trying to get through to much. Full clearance by Scott. Still danger for Bristol City. Bowden again goes round his man. Be a good cross this time. Scott is unmarked. Well, he said he was being held. It goes out for a corner. For a moment, he had a bit of room, Keith Scott, until I think it was Brian Tinian who uh, came in to block him. Yeah, good cross again by Bowden, wasn't it? I think it was half a dozen and one six of the other there. Something you never get a, a penalty for. Cross from Bowden. And now Tinian's just challenging for the ball, Angus. Definitely not a foul. Header in by Tyler. Kite's absolutely flying, isn't he? I was waiting for that one to come. He's got the wind in his sails, is that next? Tyler's headed to Bowden. An anxious man at the beginning of the game. I'm sure he's less anxious now. And he always has that slightly worried look on his face. mistake before and that was on his right foot. Oh, wrong foot he's in all sorts of difficulties gets away with it this time O'Sullivan oh, hasn't really got a touch as yet Wayne O'Sullivan so it was very very difficult to come on a substitute with 15 minutes left angus everyone thinks you're full of running and you really never dis rediscover your second win here is O'Sullivan fjort off now Important foot in from Hansen. Beecham. Oh, Sullivan. Beecham. A little chip forward meant for Fjortov. He's been marshalled so well this afternoon. If that goes over Murray, there could be danger, and there is. Bent is pushing forward to help Allison. There is Bent. Fowler's pushed forward as well too. Partridge in the box. Allison needs a good cross. I think Allison will just hold it up, save a bit of time. A good challenge from Rob Edwards, but this time Bristol City lose possession. It's better defending by Swindon. I think Edwards has been outstanding for Bristol City. He's just sat in front of the back two for back two central defenders for most of the game. He seems to win every tackle he's gone in for and he does seem to relish a tackle. Probably helped today with the fact that Nyholt's not been playing for Swindon. He's another man who likes to tackle. Of course, Bristol City have missed Dave Martin to play that role in midfield to anchor it and make those vicious tackles. Well, Edwards has certainly taken that role on board and even added his own little bit of flair. Here's a man with flair, Fjortoft. This time he's blocked much. Still pressurising Swindon. Here comes Kite. I think apart from one or two exceptions in the second half, Bristol City defended quite well. They've not sat to the... My only criticism would have to be at Marvin Harry at the right back. That every time Bowden gets a ball, Bowden's got one, you know, one trick which he performs every time and Harry keeps falling for it. Now by Fowler on his opposite number seven, Kevin Horlock. Just five minutes left of this second half. Lance, strong header.
Bowden. Hansen in there again, but you notice there's no player forward for Bristol City. Harriot. Tyler, Robinson, time running out for Swindon now, and Bryant gets the better of Fjortoft, Tinian, and Partridge was looking for the ball over the top, much as the ball over the top, Scott wins it in the air, Paulock, no way through three Bristol City players. Much again. Beecham. Away by Hansen. Bent. Oh, good game. Little junior Bent has had. Murray just puts it away for safety. He had a real game of two halves, Angus, hasn't he, junior Bent? So starved with the ball in the first half. Never, very, very rarely saw it. Every time he did, there was two defenders of his backside. In the second half, he's transformed the game, and it looks like he's ensured a victory for Bristol City here today. Away by Murray. And Bristol City will be happy to camp in Swindon's half now. Tinian. Bent, three waiting in the middle. Robinson's there. Edwards did well. Tinian, the gap opened up for him. Hit the post. He cracked that Brian Tinian, and only the post denied him. Partridge, lovely skills, good cross. Bent is there, and it just goes wide. Well, Tinian shot was exceptional. Great strike, wasn't it? Full force in the left foot, but he's clipped the outside of the post, and that really set up the next chance for Junior Bent. There we are. Good play by Edwards, lots of vision. There we go, left foot, just off the post. Here's Tinian. <laughs> the shouts of Super Joe. Referring to Joe Jordan around this ground. A little premature to base that on one victory. But there certainly has been a change in fortune this week. Only time will tell how successful Jordan's second spell will be here at Ashton Gate. Scott's head up. Tinian, Scott. Tinian. They have self-belief now, Bristol City, apart from anything else. Amazing what a couple of goals will do for the confidence. Bent. Edwards. Partridge. We're into time being added on for stoppages. Two players converging on Andy Mutch, and there was no way he was going to end up with a ball after that. Here's Allison. Is there time for another one for Bristol City? Allison, a little bit audacious. You don't think he was going for his hat trick by any chance here? I think he probably was. Only one thing on his mind. Towards Bent, and Sullivan gets there first. Bowden. Horlock. The flag didn't go up. Another good save by Kite. Scott. It's gone in. It'll count. 
I don't believe that the flag didn't go up there. But Swindon have pulled one back. It is 3-2. Kite doesn't believe it. Just a long ball from Hull, that wasn't it? All the Bristol City defenders stopped, waiting for the, the linesman's flag. It never came. Eventually, Kite saved the first one, and he couldn't quite get it to the second one. I think it's come too late for Swindon. Well. Good, ball, good ball from Herlock again, look. He looked offside, Scott, from where we are. And he's managed to get the rebound in. Rob Edwards just happy to pump it into the corner while we've played two minutes of injury time. And these are anxious last moments for Bristol City. He looks at his watch again. Surely there's no time for an equaliser. Hansen clears it away. O'Sullivan forward. Bryant just pumps it away. Still the referee plays on. It's a throw-in to Bristol City and not the final whistle. Yeah, the referee's given the throw-in the other way because I think it was Andy Mooch took it from the wrong place. He's tried to sneak five or six yards and it's cost his side. Well, the linesman over the far side had actually come on, thinking the game was already over. I think he's a bit cold, he's looking forward to his uh, cup, of tea. cup of tea. Yeah. Referee looks at his watch again. Throw into Swindon. We're going into the fourth minute, and that is it. Bristol City have won the local derby, and Jordan's second spell at Ashton Gate starts with a victory. Goals from Junior Bent, who got the ball rolling and had a super game here. Wayne Allison got a pair himself. Two goals also from Keith Scott, but his second coming too late for Swindon Town. It's another defeat for Swindon away from home. They still have only three points. It's a famous victory, though, for Bristol City and Joe Jordan. The final score here at Ashton Gate. Bristol City 3, Swindon Town 2. Well, what a breathless second half. And just to repeat once again, the final score, music to the ears of City fans, Bristol City 3, Swindon Town 2. We'll have more reaction later, and we'll also have highlights from Bristol Rovers' match at Hull yesterday and action from this afternoon's other First Division matches, Middlesbrough against Wolves and Burnley against Sheffield United. Stay with us. Snickers is big enough to your hunger because it's with fresh roasted it's one big delicious eat more satisfying than a more satisfying than a or even a satisfaction in a big way Snickers is the big eat that really satisfies After a hundred years, you can now enjoy John Smith's draft in a can. It's got a widget for that just served by the landlord taste. Oh, I'm not doing this. Well, don't you like the beer? Well, I like the beer. It's just not my material. I'm sorry, I am not prepared to compromise my hard man of comedy image. I mean, why should I? Widget. He's got a widget. A lovely widget. A widget it has got. 
There's never been a card quite like the Shell Smart Card. It lets you pick up gifts from Shell service stations and save for items from our catalogue, including tapes and CDs. You can also donate money to charities, get UCI cinema tickets, or even collect air miles. Ask at your local Shell service station. Get smart, get the card. Cargo Club offers members a massive range of top brands at warehouse prices. It's open now, so come and take a free peek before you join. With Christmas just around the corner, it's worth checking out the prices. Jump in your car and go to Cargo Club. Castle Court, Bristol. The new chief exec starts today. Oh, thank you. Has entire departments for breakfast, I hear. Of course, this means there'll be adjustments. Yes. I'll send a car to the station and get in his good box. Good idea. Something to read, madam. Announcing our new business first service. And if you travel off peak, you'll get a third off. You only get Great Western service from Great Western people. Welcome back. Lots more good action and goals still to come from yesterday and this afternoon's two First Division fixtures. But first of all, let's get reaction to events at Ashton Gate that finished Bristol City 3, Swindon Town 2. Mark Shale, relief? Very much so. I thought it was a great performance by the lads. Uh, everyone worked very hard, very committed, and uh, although there was a late scale, I thought we thoroughly deserved it overall. Sean Taylor, the away troubles continue? Yeah, but rather disappointing, really. I mean, after our first half showing, I thought we deserved obviously being nil nil or possibly better, but. Second half, we yeah. conceded some bad goals again, and that's yeah. been our Well, a goalless there. first half, but uh, we, we, we got a feast of goals in the second half. It started off with Junior Bent. Yeah, it was uh, some work between Brian Tunyon and, and Wayne Allison, and uh, I think as this goes on here, uh, Wayne eventually gets a great shot in, which I thought was going in, actually. Uh, but uh, Junior was on there after a save from Digby, if you're looking. Good save, and Junior's on there to tuck it in. I'm mean, lucky in a way, Sean, that the, that, that the palm back went straight into the path of Junior. Yeah, anywhere else, and I think we would have, would have cleared our lines, whatever, but we preferred that Junior was in the right place and stuck it away very well. And what, what did you make of Wayne Allison's goal? Was this bad luck or bad defending? Um, it, it's difficult to say. Partridge's done very well there, and I think Brian Clear knocks the ball in, and Eddie's a bit, un, well, a bit unfortunate. And I see Cole Tyron knocks the ball in, actually into um, Wayne, who, who puts yeah. it in very well. Yeah. But, if the cross came in from Brian Tinian, he, he had a good game, didn't he? Yeah, he was very lively, and uh, I thought the two forward lads caused problems for, for Swindon all day, and uh, I think we've got to just rewards. Mm. And then the... It was almost straight, straight again, wasn't it? Was City relaxed a little bit too much? Yeah, it was, I think Phil might have been a little bit unsighted here. Uh, I think it went possibly between Martin Scott's legs, but uh, he produced some great saves for us later on in the game. Yeah. What did you make of this one? I thought Paul put the ball in, he's done that well all, all, all game, and Keith's got his foot on it, and all he can ask him is to get on target, he's done that. Yeah. Swindon must have thought they were in with a shout then, but the third goal really killed them off. Yeah, we're 2 1 down, and this one comes, I think, very quickly after that, and Junior Bent as well here, gets yeah. the ball in, and Wayne taps it in. Yeah. yeah, good to see this one. I mean, it was Junior Bent's pace that really undid Swindon. Yeah, yeah uh, Fraser came out, and he's tucked it round him and put in a great uh, cross with his left foot. And uh, Wayne doing what he does well uh, on the end of it, mm. and uh, it was a great result for us, just what we needed. Mm. And the fifth goal, Sean Taylor, it was just too late, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, a, it was the last minute. I think it was a ball knocked in again, and there was questions whether he was offside, but to be fair, Keith carried on and stuck it in, and, yeah. and like I say, it was too late now. <laughs> Extraordinary goal. I mean, nobody seemed to be celebrating it, did they? No, I think everyone thought he was offside, and Phil's made another great save, and. Uh, and Scott has tucked it in, but uh, I'd like to see that from, from the angle of the linesman. It was strange. <laughs> yeah. So what, what now for Swindon then, Sean? Back to the drawing board? Well, we've got now what, two home league games on Wednesday. We've got Burnley and Luton on Saturday. And our home form hours hasn't been so bad, so hopefully we can get back yeah. into winning ways and now. And, of course, you've got the cup game against Derby coming up as well. I think that's the following Wednesday, yeah. So it's three home games, and hopefully the fans <laughs> are still come and we'll get some out of those three. Yeah, it's still a question of cracking it on the road, isn't it? We're going to take one final break now then, and we can see Bristol Rovers away to hold from yesterday afternoon and today's two First Division games. Don't go away.
Look, Beanbag, hazel trees. Big deal. Are we setting up a beer business or studying botany? Yeah, but maybe it can help us. Hazel? That finds water, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, that's British hazel. This is good old Australian hazel. <laughs> Gavin MacDonald, inventor of the Jamaican rumba. That's it, rum. One of many inspired chocolates found in a box of Terry's All Gold. Tales of the Black Horse, the lightning loot. Once there was a giant who was tired of clamping about the land, putting the wind up people. So he raided his nest egg <coughs> and went to buy a cart. Where's these giant carts, then, eh? Um, how much have you got? Now you need twice as much. I'm a bit short at the moment. Um, don't worry, I know just the people. Now the cart salesman knew that Lloyd's Bank can agree a personal loan on the spot. Sorry. Perfectly all right, sir. <laughs> The moral of our story, if you need to get your skates on, come to Lloyd's Bank for a personal loan. The Lightning Loan, another legendary service from Lloyd's Bank. Time out! Time out is crisp wafer biscuit, delicious Cadbury's flake, covered in Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate. So, whatever the time, when it's that time, it's time out time. Ooh. From Cadbury. Time out. There's never been a card quite like the Shell Smart Card. It lets you pick up gifts from Shell service stations and save for items from our catalogue, including tapes and CDs. You can also donate money to charities, get UCI cinema tickets, or even collect air miles. Ask at your local Shell service station. Get smart, get the card. Cargo Club offers members a massive range of top brands at warehouse prices. It's open now, so come and take a free peek before you join. With Christmas just around the corner, it's worth checking out the prices. Jump in your car and go to Cargo Club. Castle Court, Bristol. Arthur's popped out to buy a television. Oh, these look interesting. And naturally, he pops in for a closer look. But then, the sun comes out. Fortunately, Arthur spotted the 21S1 from Panasonic, the only TV with cats, contrast auto tracking system, which means the picture automatically adjusts to changes in light and keeps the Panasonic just to Arthur's liking. The Panasonic 21S1 with cats. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we'll have a full recap of this afternoon's local derby at Ashton Gate. It finished Bristol City 3, Swindon Town 2. But first, though, we'll have reaction from the game and one of City's heroes, Junior Bent. Uh, junior, congratulations. That was an inspired performance. Why does it take a change of manager? Uh, sometimes take a change. I don't think it was a change. I think the lads would have given 110% anyway. It's a derby match and you've got to put all you got into it. Now, you have been nominated as the man of the match and you got a goal as well. That's a bit rare for you lately, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a bit rare, but it's always nice to score a good goal. And as long as it goes in the back of the net, that's all that matters. What do you think made the difference out here today? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I think the lads were inspired. We are having shots, we are playing well. I think the crowd was brilliant behind us and everything just went for us today. Of course, with Joe Jordan, he's not a man to have shouting at you after a match, so uh, was that an incentive? Yeah, that's an incentive. I was here when he was here before, and you don't want to get shouted after the match. And I think him coming back has like, inspired all the crowd and everybody's behind us today and wanted us to win. And what do you think this is going to do now for your confidence for the rest of the season? Well, we're taking one game at a time, and we'll be going into the next game with a lot of confidence, but the next game is a different game completely. Right. Ben, thank you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. 
and I suspect the celebrations at Ashton Gate will continue for a long time. Well, as I promised earlier, we can now bring you the five goals from Southend against Reading. Your commentator, Peter Brackley. Oh, Ross was just too long there for Thompson, but here's Otto. Another appeal that comes in, this time it is given. Hopkins was the offender. And he scores! His block sent the wrong way. It goes Gooding. Quinn taking over. It's kicked by Barnard. It's Quinn with the shot! Oh, fabulous goal by Jimmy Quinn. Well, that was the Quinn of old then. One glance at goal after the fist kick then. Totally from Barnard. Maybe that threw the South End defenders. It's not stayed on his line. Hopkins out. And it's a goal! Hopkins with a clearance which fell straight to Gary Jones. The stand-in striker, the man who's come into the side today. Drop check now. There's his shots beaten away. Oh, a very unsavory clash. The ball seemed to have scrummed away from the keeper then. Drop check. Powered in that shot then. It came back off the goalkeeper who said they couldn't hold it. In went one of the Reddick players. It was Mick Gooding, and his foot was very high. And it was certainly a dangerous tackle. He's received a caution for it. Gooding now. The court in possession. Thompson. Another great chance here for Jones. Reading caught out again. Dobchek can't get back at Jones, and he's finished very tidily indeed. Right into the corner. Jones with a cross, that's clinched it now, it's Thompson, and it's four. It was such a positive break then by Southend. Thompson completely wrong putting the keeper. And it's turned into a comprehensive victory for the home side. Well, time to concentrate now on the second division. Bristol Rovers travelled to Hull, remembering how they were taken apart on their last visit to Boothfree Park. A Dean Windus hat-trick then gave the Yorkshireman a 3-0 win. Richard Latham reports on yesterday's match. Hull's early pressure gave Brian Parkin the chance to show that he's fully recovered from his broken hand. That save from Chris Hargreaves. Dennis Booth would certainly have been demanding a fighting spirit from his Rovers team on his return to Boothbury Park, where he spent nine years as player and coach. But Marcus Browning perhaps carried it a little bit too far when he got involved with Dean Windass. It was a bout that would have done credit to a wrestling ring. Browning gaining the first fall, and perhaps in the end winning by a submission. But on the evidence of this season so far, perhaps both players lucky to escape with only a yellow card from referee Kevin Lynch of Knaresborough. To the delight of assistant boss Booth and manager John Ward, Rovers began to come into the game and produce some good passing moves. Here Justin Skinner finds Warrell Sterling and his cross sees Marcus Stewart's shot blocked at the far post. On 37 minutes, Rovers went in front after clearing this long ball forward. And it was Justin Channing on his 26th birthday who had much to do with the goal. It's Marcus Stewart picking up the ball and exchanging passes with Channing to create space for a shot. Stewart in this form doesn't miss from there. There are a few better strikers than Stewart when one on one with the goalkeeper. Look at the confidence with which he accepts the chance. Despite playing well for long periods, Rovers owed much to Parkin's agility in the first half. Here, Linton Brown's shot brings another good save. Hull felt they had genuine claims for a first-half penalty when Brown cut inside Billy Clark and tangled with Andy Gurney. Brown had absolutely no doubt it was a spot kick. Referee Lynch was equally adamant. 
the home fans expected a spirited Hull fight back in the second half. Instead, it was Rovers who were even more dominant and playing the ball around like a team with confidence high. Skinner's pass found Lee Archer, who'd come on as a substitute for the injured Channing, and his cross was headed narrowly wide by Gareth Taylor. Archer's speedy wing runs were to cause Hull a lot of problems in the closing stages. Here he races on to Taylor's pass and sets up a great chance for Stewart. How did I miss? Taylor's all-action performance meant that Rovers didn't miss Paul Miller, out injured after his four goals against Bar City. Here Taylor's cross sets up Marcus Stewart for the killer second goal. That sent Rovers fans into ecstasy. They knew three points were secured. It was certainly an advert for direct football as Brian Parkin's long clearance six minutes from time totally caught out the whole defence. Taylor's job was to pick out his strike partner and Stewart completed an excellent victory over a team riding high in the second division. Hull City nil, Bristol Rovers two. And back to today's action. Burnley have been packing in the big crowds at Turf Moor since their promotion last season. John Helm and Chris McMenemy are the commentators for their match with Sheffield United. Oh, as that roar goes up as Burnley find good possession here. And Adrian Heath made some great ground. And into the area he goes. If he pulls this one back, they're in trouble. Here's Robinson. A goal for Burnley. Did it cross the line? I thought it did. It did. Kevin Gage. Tries to get around and does so successfully. It's an own goal, although Kevin Gage is going to take most of the credit for it. Justin Flo may have stuck out a boot as well. He's got his arms raised. Did it go in off Randall? It's an equaliser, that's all that matters. And what a great time for Dave Bassett's team to score on the stroke of half-time. Burnley have a corner nonetheless. A long, long one as well, and here's a chance! not only a chance, it's a goal for Jamie Hoyland. If ever he wanted to score a goal for Burnley, it was against Sheffield United. It's just what he's done. The manager leads the applause. Burnley regained the lead. Guess who? Robinson onside. Dangerous crossball in. Gale! 3-1. What a start for the substitute. He's a huge man, and Jimmy Mullen feels the day has been won. He'll put it down to a great substitution and John Gale scores his first league goal for Burnley and may well have sealed the points. More pressure to come though. Oh, and a boot swings in. This could be number four. Kelly can't get his hands on it. It's four all right. And Burnley are surely home and dry now, thanks to Steve Davis. Oh, it's his day all right. Well, they've beaten Bristol City and Derby County in the last two weeks. But here they come for a goal for themselves. They've got one as well from Andy Scott. It's 4-2 now. The goals continue to flow at Turf Moor. Andy Scott's second, uh, well, it's his uh, third of the week. He scored two against Chesena in the Anglo-Italian Cup. This is a more important one set up at Grandstand Finale even now. Well, the only other match this afternoon saw Brian Robson's Middlesbrough at home to Graham Taylor's Wolves. A real crunch match at the top of the first division at Ayrson Park, where, believe it or not, Wolves haven't won since 1951. Roger Thames and Barry Venison saw them try to end that bleak run. Musto, Hendry let it go. Hendry, it's there! At last, the breakthrough. Stow. Looks desperate, but Hendry bought the ticket and won the raffle. Well, I suppose it wasn't the classic goal that we might have expected, but a good little dummy there from Hendry, leaving the ball, getting the return, and his shot deflected, but in fairness, it's no more than Middlesbrough deserve. And I wonder how significant that result will be come the end of the season. Now, a complete recap on the local derby at Ashton Gate, which finished Bristol City 3, Swindon Town 2. Bryant, no man up front. Here's Allison. Nice support now from Partridge. They'll just run off the side of the pitch. Tinian's run forward now. That's meant for Tinian. Controls it well. Allison, first time. Great save. Bent. They may not have seen many goals at Ashton.
Ashton Gate this season, but they've seen one now, and the goal scorer is Junior Bent, a man that Joe Jordan brought to Ashton Gate, and he puts Bristol City into the lead. Good shot from Alison, wasn't it? And Bent doing what all right-sided midfield should, oh, players should do, and the ball comes back off the goalkeeper. He's made the goal. Good play, though, by City, possibly the best play that so far in the half. Good ball up to Tinian, he held the ball up, shielded up. Lovely little pass into the feet of Alisson. First time shot, good save by Digby, nothing wrong with that, Angus. But there's Junior Bent to put City in front. Scott again. Partridge. Lovely control. Tinian. It's towards Alisson. Here's Partridge, surely number two. Alisson! It's two! Gate goes mad, Allison scores, and Joe Jordan's magic is sparkling all over Bristol City. Swindon now on the tack, Bowden forward to Scott, it's 2-1, and Scott scores his ninth, and this game is not over yet. Here goes Bent, he's gone round two men. Tinian is out wide on the left. That's forward to Bent again. Digby's committed. The cross comes in. Allison is 3-1. And Junior Bent is playing out of his skin. And Allison has his second. Nothing wrong with Bent there. Well, he's had an injection of something at half-time. I'm not sure what it is, but a cracking goal. Good bowling, wasn't it, by Tinian? And Junior Bent's come in. Why Fraser Digby's come, Angus, I will never, ever know. He's got all sorts of defenders back there. Murray can't make the header. Alisson's at the far post. A great cross from Bent, and City are back to 3-1. Here it is. Away from the goalkeeper, Fraser Digby. has got no earthly chance of catching him there. Don't know why he's come, but it's a great ball. Bowden. Horlock. The flag didn't go up. Another good save by Kite. Scott, it's gone in. It'll count. I don't believe that the flag didn't go up there. But Swindon have pulled one back. It is 3-2. Kite doesn't believe it. It's a long ball from Horlock, wasn't it? All the Bristol City defenders stopped, waiting for the, the linesman's flag. It never came. Eventually, Kite saved the first one, and he couldn't quite get it to the second one. Well, delight for one of my studio guests, Mark Shale. Your job now, I suppose, is to force your way into a winning side. Well, that's going to be difficult, especially after today's performance, but I'm sure Joe Jordan would want the competition for places. What, what plus points will Joe have taken from this game? I think it was a, it was a very good all-round display. The pleasing thing for me was the amount of chances we created and uh, the, the players looked very sharp, and I think they had a point to prove today, and I think yeah. they did that. Sean, any consolations for Swindon to derive from this? Um, on our first half performance, I mean, kept the clean sheet at half-time and probably felt we could have gone to better things, but... The old story that we couldn't do that. So, yeah. I mean, we've got to now get ourselves going for the game on Wednesday against Burnley. Bet the best players on the field for you? Um, for, for Bristol, I thought Allenson and Partridge did well up front for them, and Junior Bent was lively at times in the second half, and um, Paul Bourne did well for us on the left flank, but I mean, that was about it, really. <laughs> Well, that's just about all from a very busy West match live. We managed to produce another spectacular for you, didn't we? City 3, Swindon 2. Our thanks, of course, to Mark Shale of Bristol City and Sean Taylor of Swindon. The next live football on HTV is the vital European Champions League fixture between Gothenburg and Manchester United on Wednesday, a match that United must win. Angus and Mark will be here as usual next Sunday with the West match. Until then, from all of us, goodbye. UEFA Champions League Live, IFK Gothenburg versus Manchester United. 
Gothenburg will be looking for revenge in a match that United have to win to reach the quarterfinals. But with Cantona back, giving United full strength in attack, Gothenburg's defence will need to be watertight to avoid a repetition of their first game. A make-or-break game for Alex Ferguson's men. UEFA Champions League Live, 7.20 Wednesday on ITV. Marvellous thing, the human body, eh, Doctor? Yeah, well, it can be a bit puzzling at times, though. If you'd like to know a bit more about how the pieces fit together, then maybe our Good Health programme can help. We're actually looking for your help too because we want to find a family to take part in the next series during which the good doctor here will be helping to get them in shape. So if you'd like to join us, phone Bristol 722-191. That's Bristol 722-191. And good help. I still think it crackers to go to the country. I'm a vet, Mum. I belong in the country. Country air, country people, country ways. Yes, follow me. I need you. Uh, but I haven't even moved in yet. She'll be all right now. Keep her here for a couple of days to get her strength back. Right, well, that's happening. Coffee would be nice. Don't have none. Good job I bought my own, then. Smells good. Yes. There's no taste like Nescafe. Yeah. You might need this here for when you come next time. Next time. The 1995 Nissan Primera is such a pleasure to drive that occasionally it likes to go for a drive all on its own. This kind of enjoyment out of driving? You can with a Nissan. The 1995 Primera. Arthur's popped out to buy a television. Oh, these look interesting. And naturally, he pops in for a closer look. But then, the sun comes out. Fortunately, Arthur spotted the 21S1 from Panasonic, the only TV with cats, contrast auto tracking system, which means the picture automatically adjusts to changes in light and keeps the Panasonic just to Arthur's liking. The Panasonic 21S1 with cats. Who was that fat person? Me, Janine Roebuck, before I lost 24 pounds in three months on the Slim Fast plan. And now it's even easier with these delicious all new recipe soups. Tasty rich tomato and smooth creamy mushroom. So it's a shake for breakfast, a nourishing soup for lunch, and a proper dinner. The pounds just fall off with Slim Fast. And you love new Slim Fast soups. Start Slim Fast soup today. <coughs> See the weight come off. <coughs> 